Hi! This is the video number 5 of chapter 2 on Perfect Competition. In this video we are going to talk about the regulation regarding taxes and subsidies from the government side. Okay, so suppose that the government decides to impose a $1 tax on every soft drink that is sold. What will happen to the price of the soft drinks? Many people will answer that the price of soft drinks will increase by a dollar, with consumers now paying one more dollar per soft drink than they would have paid without the tax. But this answer is not right. Second case. Suppose now the following question. The government want to impose a tax of 50 cents on every liter of gasoline. The government considers two different methods for collecting this tax. Under the first method, the owner of each gas station will deposit the tax money, 50 cents time the number of liters sold, in a locked box for a government agent to collect. Under method 2, it will be the consumer, the one who will pay the tax, 50 cents times the number of liters purchased, directly to the government when you are declaring your taxes. So which method costs more to the consumer? Many people will answer that method 2 does, but the answer is again wrong. The burden of a tax or the benefit of a subsidy falls partly on the consumer and partly on the producer. And furthermore, it really doesn't matter who puts the money in the collection box. Methods 1 and 2 cost the consumer the same amount of money. But why? Let's see what happened with the tax. As we will see, the share of a tax borne by consumers depends on the shapes of the supply and demand curves, and in particular on the relative elasticities of supply and demand, as it happened with the change in consumer and producer surplus in the first part of the chapter. In the first example, the first question about soft drinks, a $1 tax will cause the price of soft drinks to rise, but usually less than a dollar. To understand why, let's have a look at the change in the initial equilibrium and for simplicity we will consider a specific tax that is fixed per unit sold, fixed amount of money per unit sold, so instead of an valorum tax, although the results will be roughly the same. Okay, so suppose that the government imposes a tax of T. This will be the tax, T. T cents per unit on soft drinks. Assuming everyone effectively pays the tax, the government then must receive T, the tax, cents for every soft drink sold. This means that the price the consumer pays must exceed the net price the seller receives by T cents. Okay, so the difference between the price the, buy the buyer is going to pay and the price the seller is going to receive is exactly T. Okay, this is illustrated in this slide. P0 and Q0 represent the market clearing price and the quantity clearing price before the tax is imposed. So, after the tax is imposed, the government receives T multiplied by the quantity exchange. Okay, so the government will be happy. How we do determine what the market quantity will be after the tax is imposed? How can I know that Q1 will be the quantity exchange in this market? And how much of the tax will be supported by consumers? And how much will be supported by producers? The first thing is that I have to remember what consumers care about, the, about is the price that they must pay. So they care about this PB. And similarly, the producers worry about the price they receive. In this case, the quantity exchange in the market is Q1 
as the price decreases for producers who would like to offer a lower quantity, a lower quantity, the point where the SPS crosses with the supply is a Q1. On the point where the PB, the price the buyer, buyers pay, crosses with the demand is also Q1. Okay, so Q1 will be the quantity exchange in the market. Then the burden of the tax is shared evenly by consumers and producers. Each of them pays half the tax in this case. This is exactly half and half in this case, just because the elasticity of the demand and the supply is similar. Then, if we know the demand curve, the supply curve and the size of the tax, we can solve easily these equations. For the buyer's price, PB, the seller price, PS, and the total quantity demanding and supply. Okay, so regarding the variations for consumers and producers surplus, we can easily see that consumer surplus before, when we had the perfect competition, it was this triangle, the area limited by P0 and the demand. Okay, so all this triangle was the consumer surplus before the tax. But now, at the price they pay is PB, the new area, the new consumer surplus will be only this area, limited by PB and the demand, okay, at a quantity of Q1. So the consumers have lost A and B. What happened for the producers? The producer, before when there were perfect competition, the market clearing price was PB, P0. So this triangle, the area under this market clearing price and above the supply, this triangle was the producer surplus when we had perfect competition. But now that the price is PS, this is smaller triangle below PS and above the supply will be the new producer surplus. Okay, so the producer have lost D and C. Okay, this is the change that you have here. Buyers lose A and B, sellers lose D and C. And the government is going to earn the areas A and D as a revenue, as a tax revenue. Why? Because the areas A and D equals to this rectangle and this rectangle is t the tax multiplied by the quantity exchange okay so the government is going to earn q1 multiplied by the tax the quantity exchange multiplied by the tax and this is this area a and d so what is the dead weight loss the dead weight loss will be b and c B and C because no one, nor the consumer, nor the producer, neither the government is going to get these areas. So this is going to be a dead weight loss, a loss in welfare for the society as a whole. Okay, so the total change in welfare is therefore the sum in the Consumer surplus plus the change in the producer surplus plus the tax revenue to the government. So it will be minus A minus B minus D minus C plus A plus D. So at the end, the change in the welfare will be minus B minus C. This is the debt with us. Okay. And then. Um, as we were saying in this case, the impact of the tax was equal in the consumers and the producer. It was equally divided between them, but it will depend. Imagine the case where the elasticity of the demand is like this, so the demand is relatively inelastic and the supply is relatively elastic. Okay, so the burden of the tax will fall mostly on consumers. Okay, this will be the tax, the difference between PB and PS, and you see that most of it will be paid by the consumer. Why? Because the demand for them is very inelastic. 
Okay, so when there is a change, when there is a change, they will still be buying this product. Yep. What happened for the uh, for the opposite case when the supply is relatively inelastic compared to the demand? That most of the tax will be paid will be supported by the producer. Do you see that this area is greater than this one? Okay, that's the opposite. That's in this case. So it takes in this first case when the demand is relatively inelastic compared to the supply, it takes a relatively large increase in price to get consumers to reduce demand by even a small amount. Okay, you see that this increase. It's very small, although the price had a very huge increase. We went from P0 to PB. Examples of uh, goods that uh, has this, this relatively inelastic demand can be gasoline, drugs, like those for diabetes, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, let's have a look to the effects of a subsidy. A subsidy will be just the opposite to a tax. So it will be a payment reducing the buyer's price below the seller's price. So the effect is the same than having a negative tax. So in this case, uh, the government has an interest in increasing the quantity exchange in the market. So it, the government wants to increase the quantity exchange from Q0 to Q1. And what can I do if I'm the government, if I am the prime minister? What I have to do is to make the price that the seller receive be greater than the market clearing price in per competition and the buyers that the that the, the the price that the buyers are going to pay should be lower than the market clearing price. Why? Because at this price PB the demand will be Q1, and at this price PS the supply will be also Q1. Okay, so this difference must be paid by the government. And what happened? What happened? This that now. The producer surplus will be this huge triangle. The triangle would go from PS below PS and above this supply at a quantity of Q1. Okay, so this whole triangle. And the producer is going to earn the area D. What happened for the consumers? They are going to pay the price PB. So compared to the market clearing price, P0, they will be earning all this area. Okay, so the new triangle, the new consumer surplus will be all this area above PB and below the demand. Okay, until here. All this. Okay, what happened to the government? The government will, will have to subsidy this difference. What does it mean? It means that he will pay, the government will pay, or it will pay. This difference, the difference between PS and PB, which is the subsidy, multiplied by the quantity that is exchanged in this market. Okay, so this whole area, A, B, C, and D, which is the subsidy multiplied by the quantity exchange. Okay, so the cost to the government will be minus A, minus B, minus C, minus D. Exactly the subsidy. And what is the change in welfare then? Well, the change in welfare is the change in the consumer surplus, the change in the producer surplus, and the change in the cost or revenue to the government. In this case, plus A plus D, minus A minus D, minus B, sorry, minus C minus D, which will be at the end minus B minus C. These two areas are added weight loss in this case. And that's all. See you in the next chapter.